Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Fazbear Entertainment would like you to put your hands together for the one, the only, Freddy Fazbear. Rewritten! Content warning, this video is not made for kids. It contains fictional depictions of mental illness, fictional V-I-O-L-E-N-C-E, -E, and fictional A-B-U-S-E. The fictional characters in this story are heavily afflicted by the things that I have spelled out to you, and some of the inner monologue seems to suggest that they should be getting hurt like this, but that is absolutely not the case. Me portraying this A-B-U-S-E, or mental illness, is meant to show the audience how the illness, or A-B-U-S-E, feels inside of the mind of the afflicted person, so they can sympathize and maybe stop themselves from following a similar pattern in the future. Be careful if you are easily triggered, you're most likely about to enter the mind of someone who is heavily afflicted by illness and A-B-U-S-E. Viewer discretion is advised. Son had to keep cleaning the daycare. He had to. It was the only thing that made the bad thoughts stop. He had to take the roll of paper towels and the bottle of disinfectant and just keep spraying and wiping down surfaces, spraying and wiping, spraying and wiping over and over, back and forth, on and on and on, over the monkey bars, down the slides, through the tunnels and across the rope ladder, scrubbing every nook and cranny within his reach again and again and again. It didn't matter if the chemicals stung his hands. It didn't matter if he was rubbing the paint off the colorful plastic structures. He just had to keep cleaning, keep cleaning, clean up, clean up, clean up. Sun was completely submerged in this all too familiar rhythm, just as he had been in those 29 days when the daycare was closed. It was so familiar and safe and normal, he never wanted to stop. An alarm, an alarm was going off. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Sun was currently working on the inside of a tunnel, wiping the circular glass that capped the top of it. There were so many little grooves around the screws that held the glass in place, legions of germs hiding away from him, and that would, that would not do. No, 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 it would just not do. He had to scratch and claw at every one of them and wash them away. Clean up, clean up, clean up. There was still an alarm going off, but it felt far away. He scrubbed and scrubbed the screws, sprayed with the bottle, scrubbed even more, clean up, clean up, clean up. An alarm. An alarm. Wait. An alarm was going off. The meaning behind that sound finally sank into Sun's head. It was Miss Taylor. The mention of their manager's name shocked Sun out of the loop. He dropped the bottle of disinfectant, the drenched wad of paper towels sticking to his palms. The sound of his own breathing echoed back to him in the muggy plastic tunnel, fast and strained, overriding the muted ring that had filled his ears before. When Sun glanced to the bottom right corner of his vision, he found the symbol that was causing the alarm. It was a red triangle with an exclamation point emblazoned on it, flashing repeatedly in increasingly rapid bursts. Dread plunged inside of him an automatic response to the meaning behind the symbol. That was the alert that their managers gave them when they wanted to meet them, whether it's a checkup or a disciplinary session. Sun suddenly became aware of how unaware he had been a few seconds ago. Had he been up all night? What day was it? What time was it? He checked his internal clock, the answer making him feel like he just got a jump start from a car battery. It was 5.46 on the morning of July 7th. It was reopening day. Sun tried to leap to his feet, but rammed into the top of the tunnel instead. He crumbled, his head threatening to split open, the rest of him still catching up with the impact. But, 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 but I'm not done cleaning! Sun stammered to Moon, gathering up the wad of paper towels. I, I still have so much to do! Moon didn't respond. He hasn't in a while. But that was fine. It was fine. Moon would start talking to him again once he felt a little better. The alarm began to flash even brighter, demanding that he hurry. Sun crawled his way out of the tunnel and tumbled to the foam-padded floor. Although the ground in the daycare was built to cushion falls, a jarring amount of pain flashed through Sun's entire body. He groaned, pulling his limbs closer to himself as he tried to ride out the first few waves of it. His back was killing him, and the pistons in his arms were all infected with soreness. He hadn't felt any of this before when he was cleaning, but now that he stopped... 
Sun lowered his hands enough to take a look at them and was caught off guard by the condition they were in. The yellow paint that was supposed to cover his metal was stained a sickly white color, chunks of it flaking off to reveal pale silicone underneath. Sun checked the bottle of disinfectant that he had dropped on the way down. It was almost completely empty, only a few fluid ounces of the bright blue liquid left. Had he really been cleaning for that long? He tried to push all that aside. It didn't matter. He had to get to Miss Taylor. She would be so cross of him for being late like this. Sun gathered the cleaning supplies and pulled himself back to his feet, slides and swings and toy boxes all blurring past him as he rushed towards the giant golden doors that stood guard at the entrance of the daycare. He fumbled with the paper towel roll, trying to free up a hand to work the doorknob. Before he even had a chance to touch it, the starburst patterns of the door swung out of reach, replaced by the scowling face of Miss Taylor. Sun yelped and dropped the cleaning supplies, bumping into the safety railing that lined the staircase. Damn it, Sun, did you start cleaning again? Miss Taylor snapped the moment her eyes landed on the disinfectant. I told you, it's costing us a fortune to keep replacing all the supplies you're wasting! The woman that Sun was now faced with was formed of the same strictness that she demanded from him. The cutting angles of her cheekbones and chin surrounded her wrinkling frown like barbed wire, her needle-like eyebrows jabbed into a look of contempt. Her smooth black hair was pulled and twisted into a tight bun that seemed seconds from breaking apart, her neatly pressed button-up shirt the same dark shade. Her steel-gray horn-rimmed glasses preceded even sharper gray eyes, ones that fixated upon him and held him in place, their fierce intensity enough that he felt it might shatter her lenses. Sun had lived under her rule for long enough that he knew exactly how much trouble he would get into if he answered incorrectly. I... no, I, I was... I was... Sun sloppily tried to find his words. I, I was... I was just sprucing up the place a little bit, you know, to, to make sure everything's good and ready before the kids come back. <sighs> Miss Taylor pinched the thin bridge of her nose, her practically colorless figure seeming to make the brightness of the daycare wither in response. What's your charge level at? She asked, her glare practically roasting the paint off of his shell. 80... 89%. <laughs> Sun caught himself, boosting the number as it came out of his mouth. He was actually at 52%, but it was already pretty clear what Miss Taylor wanted to hear. Are you lying to me? Sun hesitated, picking at the decorative red ribbons tied around his wrists. No. Miss Taylor still had not broken eye contact with him, no matter how weak his reception was. He eventually gave in, looking down at his jester-like shoes instead to try and get away from her stare. Look, she growled. We gave you three extra days to get all of this out of your system. I can't have your battery die on me in the middle of my shift just because you can't get your act together. I, I, I'm sorry. He mumbled, the space beneath his collar burning in anticipation of the shock. Now that he wasn't cleaning, the reality of what he had been doing for the past week began to catch up to him. Ever since the technicians repaired him and sent him back to the daycare to wait for further orders, neither him nor Moon had been able to even gather the will to get up out of bed, much less feed themselves by charging their battery. It had only ended yesterday, when Miss Taylor woke him up by yelling about how the backup of unused fluids from his charging station had made a huge mess in parts and services where the pipeline began. She told him that he better have a full battery by reopening day if he didn't want to be sent to the scrap dump. And even though at this point Sun himself wasn't sure if he would care about being thrown away, he certainly cared about his brother going down with him. His brother. Moon had always been quiet, but never this quiet. He was hurting so bad, and Sun didn't know what to do to make it better, especially when he himself felt like he was going to fall apart any second now. His thoughts reared wildly away from that part of him. 
He, he couldn't think about that. He couldn't just lie in bed and do nothing anymore. His fingers itched to keep cleaning, the repetitive cycle calling to him again. I had to clean, had to clean, had to clean. Stop thinking about her, stop. She, she couldn't be dead. She couldn't be dead. Fanny, no, no, stop thinking about that. Don't mention her name. Well, the daycare opens in five minutes, Miss Taylor told him, stepping back. Be ready. The double doors slammed closed, the swirling golden stars rattling against the glittering frame. He stared at those dancing patterns for a few moments, trying to keep himself from drifting away. For so long, Sun had yearned for the day that they would announce that he had done well, that they could open the daycare again. But now that the day was actually here, a part of him wished that they had euthanized him instead. Sun reflexively hit himself in the face. Don't think like that. 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 He began to mutter to himself, clutching the cleaning supplies tight to his chest. Get ready, get ready, just get ready. The rest of the pizza plex opened at nine o'clock, but for the daycare, his shift started at about six o'clock. He didn't have music to practice, and most parents needed to drop their kids off early in the morning in order to make it to work on time. So even though Freddy and the others were probably playtesting the attractions right now, Sun's day had already begun. He accessed one of the two remotes that were built into his mind. A thin black cord dangled down from the ceiling, swinging towards him. He lowered his head so it could clasp around the small metal hoop sticking out of his spine, the gears hiding in the roof pumping away as Sun was lifted off the staircase. Sun mentally directed the ceiling cord around like he always did, the daycare's scenery flying in a rainbow blur beneath him as he made his way up to the golden tower where him and his brother's room was tucked away. The reason why their room was positioned at the top of a tower was to keep kids from sneaking in and getting hurt by the charging station. If it was out of their reach, any electrical accidents were impossible. So, to compensate for the distance, the designers installed the ceiling cord to allow him to go up and down without a cluttered staircase. His feet touched down on the star-shaped platform, and he swept the velvety curtains aside to enter their shared room. Layers upon layers of crayon drawings covered every square inch of their room. In some areas, the older pictures were almost completely obscured by their overlapping neighbors, the original color of the walls lost to time. After twenty years of being given presents like this, the cluttered state of his room was inevitable. The little pieces of art were gifts that the children had given him, and he loved every single one of them. The majority of them were stick figures with a scribbled backdrop of turquoise blue skies and emerald green grass, depictions of him playing with his little friends shown to him over and over and over again in one unified crowd. Sparkly stickers and glitter glue lined the edges of each piece, pink hearts and bright yellow smiles reflecting back at him at every angle. Sun found himself slowing down, becoming lost as he looked over each individual gift. His chest ached as he read the names that had been scribbled in the corners of each piece. He hadn't seen them in so long. So he should be excited to pick back up where he left off, right? Instead, Sun felt nearly paralyzed with terror. If he messed up, Bonnie would be sentenced to a fate worse than death. He missed the kids so much. What if something went wrong today? What if he wasn't good enough to keep up? What if he was too broken to fix? And... And Moon... Sun closed his eyes, the world around him fading away. He began to reach backwards into his mindscape, stretching behind himself through the swirling colors, sifting around, searching. The moment he prodded at Moon's corner of their head, he retreated with a revolted shiver. Moon was still overtaken by a tangle of emotions that felt almost sticky, poisonous, the consistency of boiling tar. Moon had barely spoken a word to him since June 28th. Sun wasn't sure if he would speak to him ever again. 
every time Sun tried to go over there, he, he just felt so hollow. It disturbed him down to his very core. It reminded him of the thoughts that he was running from, scaring him off before he even made contact with Moon. Sun opened his eyes, his hand bracing against a wall. Don't think about her, don't think about her, don't think about her. I'm... I'm sure things will get back to normal soon, Sun whispered to himself. Y you'll be feeling better soon, Mooney, I, I promise. Sun trailed off, his hand dropping to uncover the spot on the wall that he had touched. It was an empty space. There was almost a perfect rectangle of empty wall, the baby blue paint framed by the lingering remains of torn tape, a clear sign that one of the art pieces had been removed. He couldn't help but notice a multitude of other empty spaces throughout the collage of presents, the rediscovery of each gap feeling like the jab of a pencil in his eyes. Before, he had cherished the drawings that Fanny had given to him while she was little. But now, Sun's gaze drifted over to the wooden drawer that stood up against the wall beside his bed. It was mostly just filled with drills and screws and cleaning supplies, but a special drawer in the far right was different. Very different. He had covered up the edges of that drawer with layers upon layers of tape, so much that it made it impossible to open it ever again. Don't think about her. Don't think about her. Sun snapped his head back to the curtains that separated their room from the rest of the daycare. Five minutes, right. He turned away from the pictures on the walls, instead aiming for the shapes near the back. Besides his drawer, the only other features in his room were his charging station and the place where he slept. His bed was made up of a pile of soft blankets and fluffy pillows, all weaved together into something that resembled a nest. He was somewhat tempted to lie back down and shut out the rest of the world again. No, no time. Five minutes. Sun forced himself to approach the cabinet instead, setting the bottle of disinfectant and the unused paper towel roll inside of an army of similarly used products, putting it back in its organized position to the left of the Windex. He made absolutely sure not to look at or even touch the tape cover drawer as he straightened the disinfectant so it matched the angle that all the other cleaning products reflected. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't even think about it. And now Sun found himself standing back at the top of the tower, the empty daycare sprawling out before him, the entire vast cavern seeming to hold its breath in suspense. The huge rainbow slide fed into the rolling ball pit at the base of his tower, the dome-shaped lights on the ceiling making the entire colorful world shine. Almost every imaginable playground structure stood solid over the bright blue foam padding of the floors. Monkey bars, swing sets, and coiling slides clustered beside ramps and bridges that mimicked the formation of grand castles. And those were just the things kept on the ground. The entire right wall was filled with the play place, the same structure that Gregory had been pursued down on the 28th. Ruby red support beams built upwards from the wide base in a crisscross pattern, a flock of safety nets keeping the children from climbing into places that they couldn't get down from. Inside the play place were dozens of levels filled with all sorts of tunnels and rope bridges and maze-like obstacles for the kids to scurry around inside. And, of course, directly across from Sun's tower stood the main entrance of the daycare, the doorframe outlined of beaming triangles that mimicked the sun rays that ringed his circular face. Bulky, overflowing toy boxes waited at the base of the stairs, ready for little hands to plunge into them and pull out the materials for anything their imagination could ever want. It was perfect. The whole place was brimming with potential, desperate to be given a chance to do what it was built to do once again. Sun was only concerned that he himself couldn't reflect the same feeling. He had been in here alone with Moon for so long. Far too long. For 29 days, the place had been achingly empty, devoid of all life. The playground turned into a wasteland. It had been maddening. 
So why wasn't he excited for the doors to open once more? Sun hit himself in the head again, trying to jostle himself out of that uncharacteristic stupor. Today was too important. He couldn't mess up. This was their only shot. Sun's bleached fingers reached up to his face, tracing along each curve and edge. True to the theme of the rest of his design, his head was crafted to look like a cartoonish smile within a bright yellow circle surrounded by tangerine orange triangles that represented the rays of light that radiated from the true sun, similar to what a child would draw in the top corner of the little art projects. But even without a mirror, he could tell that he didn't look right. He wasn't smiling. Sun's fingers found his freckle-covered cheeks, pressing them upwards. His teeth peeled into view as he forced the smile onto his face, trying to retain the expression when he lifted his fingers. It was drooping, he could tell. Come on, come on. Sun tried again, but the second smile was even more pathetic than the first. It wasn't working. Why wasn't it working? Was he broken? She... She can't be dead. She can't be dead. She can't be dead. Sun smacked his fist against his head a few more times to try and scare away the bad thoughts. He wanted to clean again, but the kids would be here any minute. He had to be ready for them. Sun began to pat the right half of his face, the one that would stay put during their transformation and take on the appearance of a crescent moon. Moon? Moon, it's time to wake up, he said aloud. We have to get up to work. At first, there was no sign that Moon had even heard him. He tried again to get closer to his brother, but the surface of Moon's thoughts felt like burbling lava. She's gone. She's really gone. She's really gone. Why didn't I hold on tighter? Why didn't I save her? Why couldn't I get her to stop? M Moon, wake up, please! Sun tried again, turning in circles on the platform. Please, we need to work! Miss Taylor's going to scrap us! At least that got a slight reaction out of him. He felt Moon's presence stir in the back of his head, rising a little closer to the surface. She's gone, she's gone, she's never coming back. I killed her, I let her die. Sun sucked in a breath as if he had been struck, desperately trying to cling to anything that would keep him afloat. But what could Sun ever say to make this better? Moon had been the one to witness it happen. The depths of Moon's grief was ravaged by remorse, remorse that Sun knew was tearing him up every single second of every single day. The agony was so heavy, so intense, that Sun was scared that they would both drown in it. He couldn't. He had to keep them alive. He had to keep going, or Miss Taylor would. Finally, Moon dragged himself out of sleep, speaking for the first time in eight days. What is it? His voice was so bleak and empty, it made Sun's chest hurt. We, we, we have to work today. It's reopening day, Sun tried to remind him, nudging at his brother's presence. We have to be strong for the kids. Moon didn't respond. It wasn't a silence of frustration or annoyance. Moon just didn't have the energy to reply. Sun hated feeling his brother be this miserable. Sun was fighting to stay out of that state to distract himself with cleaning up, but... He was unsure if his method would ever be enough to bring Moon out of this. She's gone. She's gone. She's really gone. No, 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 no. He hit himself in the head again. Just don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just don't think about it. He had to be strong. He had to be the big brother just this once. It's it's okay, Moon, Sun said eventually. You don't have to get up today. I I'll deal with the kids. No, no. Moon stopped him in his tracks, the simple action of speaking seeming to exhaust him for a few moments. The dark, rippling mess that had become his brother's side of their mindscape shifted around trying to pull itself back up. I, I can work today. 
Sun did his best to replicate the bright sunny patterns that his thoughts were supposed to be doing, hoping that it would help Moon follow along. It took an enormous amount of effort to keep up with the kids at the daycare. He wasn't so sure if Moon could... Are, are, are you sure you can do this? Sun asked slowly. I mean, can you do this without me? He replied in their head. Uh, Sun shrugged, shifting his weight around. Look, I, I don't want to force you to... No, it's okay. I'm up. Moon pressed up closer to him in their mindscape. Y you don't have to cover for me. Sun waited a few seconds longer, but eventually just accepted it. If Moon thought that he could work today, Sun wasn't about to turn down the extra help. Smile, he told himself. Just smile. Put feeling into it. He closed his eyes and tried his best to push back the awful, heavy slop that was clogging up his brain. Smile, smile, be happy, act like nothing happened. Don't scare them. He stretched on the smile. It crumpled at the edges. He pushed again, again. Don't think about her. Stop thinking about her. Finally, the smile stuck. He held it for as long as he could, counting down the seconds until six o'clock finally arrived. The clock chimed and the world burst inside, whether he was prepared to face it or not. Thumps and squeaks began to reverberate down the rainbow-colored slide, signaling that the day had officially begun. He waited as the weight of the guests made their way down the slope of the slide, their giggles already audible. Even though the children had the option of just walking in through the front door, none of them would ever opt to do that when there was the possibility of a fun ride instead. Three little kids shot out from the slide into the ball pit, scattering the plastic balls in all directions like someone who had stamped into a puddle. Their little heads poked up from the layers of colorful plastic, their eyes glimmering with curiosity as they spotted him at the top of his tower. Sunny! Sunny! <laughs> They cheered, waving their stubby arms around to get his attention. Just seeing them again felt like a breath of fresh air. They were some of the regulars that always waited outside before the doors of the pizza plex were even opened by the managers. Sun already knew all of them by name. Emily, Tyler, and Jess. <clears throat> Hello, little ones! Sun called, putting as much enthusiasm as he could muster into the greeting. Welcome back to the daycare! He remotely called the ceiling cord like before, the magnetic clasp hooking around the loop between his shoulder blades. Once it was secure, he jumped off the tower feet first, the cord slowing his fall and letting him plop into the ball pit harmlessly. We're back! Jess called, both her and her two friends paddling up to meet him. We missed you! Once they reached him, they instantly jumped up for hugs, something that made the smile on his face come more naturally. I missed you too! It's been so lonely in here, he replied, making sure the expression stuck as he held the little ones close. What do you want to- What happened? Tyler piped up. My mom said something scary happened! Sun faltered. Darkness gathered behind his eyes. He found himself staring at Jess, who wasn't nearly as eager for the answer as the other two. She was the oldest in the group. He immediately wondered how much her parents had told her. He tried to shake the chilling shiver off. Be happy. Nothing's wrong. I'm okay. Uh, um, yeah, it, it was scary, Sun said nervously. B but it's all fine now. We caught the bad guy. Did someone die? Tyler gasped. I heard someone died! No, no, uh... Sun rubbed the side of his head, struggling to keep the grin up. Let's not talk about all of that. It's too scary for you. What? Nothing is too scary for me, Tyler argued, puffing up his chest. Mom let me watch Jurassic Park! Yeah, we're brave, Emily nodded in agreement. We won't be scared. We uh, can- <laughs> Hey, what do you want to play? Sun interrupted, climbing up out of the ball pit and setting them down on the foam floors. We have a lot of playing to catch up on. Let's do that. Y y yeah, c come on, guys, Jess piped up, waving for the others to follow her. We should go get our toys before Rachel tries to hog them all. 
Emily and Tyler tried a few more times to prod an answer out of him, but eventually forgot about it when he dumped the toy box over, distracted by the plushies that tumbled across the padded floors. The plushies that the daycare provided were all on brand with the rest of the Pizzaplex. The majority of them were made in the image of the characters in the band. The animatronics features simplified with bigger eyes and knobbly limbs that the children always seemed to adore. Once they picked out what they wanted to do, another couple of kids slid down the slide, ones that he had to go over and greet like before. It was Sylvia, George, and Lucas, three kids whose parents usually carpooled to get here. What happened? Sylvia asked the moment that her blonde head popped out of the ball pit. Why was the pizza plex all closed down? Oh, don't worry about that, Sun said, scooping her up and placing her on solid ground. I I've been waiting to play with you all for so long. Let's go have fun. Lucas narrowed his eyes at Sun, then spotted Jess from across the room. Sylvia, George, and Lucas hurried over to her, whispering something into her ear. Jess put down her Freddy toy, following the three of them as they raced over to the play place, beginning to climb up the various rope ladders and hanging nets. Sun was about to worry about whatever Lucas had whispered to her, but he was distracted when two more newly arrived children, Rachel and Catherine, began a game of sharks and sailors in the ball pit, immediately joined by Emily and Tyler. However, while Sun was keeping watch over the ball pit to make sure the sharks didn't actually start to bite the sailors, Moon pointed out to him in their head, They're being quiet. Sun lifted his head. He was right. The whispers of Sylvia, George, and Lucas drifted out from the various levels of the maze held in the play place. When it wasn't nap time, Moon's job was to keep a lookout for trouble in the daycare. While Sun had his full attention on the children he was directly interacting with, Moon was able to skim the noise around them for any disturbances and alert him if he hears something suspicious going on in the background. I I'm going to go check on them, Sun said to Rachel, who was taking the role of the shark in the children's game. Just play nice, okay? He called the cord again, guiding it so it moved across the slits in the ceiling and dropped down to connect to his back's hoop. Not only was the ceiling cord good for reaching his tower, it was also handy to zip from one corner of the daycare to another without plowing through an ocean of hyper children. Sun directed the ceiling cord to lift himself into the air, his hands and feet grasping at the support beams as he scaled the outside of the play place. The entire structure smelled like cleaning chemicals, a smell that had now been permanently imprinted into every surface in this daycare. Trying to keep his weight off of his bad arm, he listened intently, little giggles and shushes setting off his sensors again. More to the left, down a floor, there. He poked his head in to see what they were doing, met with the sight of a huddled group of children all whispering into each other's ears. Jess was the only one not participating, instead just sitting crisscross a few feet away from them, picking at a scab on her knee. George saw him first, smacking the other two, all three of them staring at him with the all-too-familiar bug-eyed look of little ones being caught doing something wrong. Sun retained the smile, asking, Now, what are you all up to? We're solving the mystery, Lucas piped up. We want to find the ghost of the rabbit lady! Alarm flickered through him like an electrical pulse, landing directly on Moon. Could... Wait, could that actually be a thing? Could she, could she be a... No, don't think about it, don't! Uh, uh, <laughs> no, you don't need to... You don't need to do that, Sun stammered. The, uh, rabbit lady is gone now. D did you want to come play with the others instead? They're playing shark. But we want to know what happened, George protested. I already told you, Sylvia said, whacking him in the face. It was the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny turned evil. No, he didn't, Lucas argued, his cheeks puffed up and red. He turned to Sun. The Easter Bunny is not evil. Can you tell her she's wrong? I, uh, Sun tried his best to keep up. Yeah, I, I don't think it was the Easter Bunny. Well, then who was it? Sylvia asked. Yeah, can you tell us, please? George clasped his hands together, his big round eyes sparkling. Moon retracted further and further inside of their shared head, pulling away from Sun when he tried to check on him. A quick glance to Jess made it clear that she felt the same. She was only six, but that still made her older than the other three, meaning that she was currently the closest to understanding the seriousness of the topic.
No, I I'm sorry, Sun told them. That story is, uh, it's too scary for you. Ah, they sighed. But, hey, you know what? We've got lots of way less scary things to do here, Sun continued. Like, oh, hey, d do you want to play hide and seek? Yeah, yeah, it just got up. Yeah, th that'll be way better. Come on, guys. <gasps> yeah, Lucas cheered. You be the rabbit lady. We'll hide. Still unsettled, Sun agreed, closing his eyes and counting as they scattered in all directions, their suppressed giggles trailing away. Even without his sight, he was easily able to keep track of every one of their thumping footsteps as they scrambled for a place to hide. Despite the fact that he knew where they were, he made plans to take a little longer to quote-unquote find them. Just because he was built with an excellent sense of hearing didn't mean that he had to be a show-off and ruin their fun. With his eyes covered, the option of switching with Moon appeared. Obviously, since they weren't fighting for control right now, Moon didn't act on the suggestion. Sun tried to feel him and see if he was okay, but he kept on hiding away every time he tried to get a read on his emotions. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, they don't know any better, Sun said to him through their thoughts. Are, are you okay? There was a long pause. Rather than answering, Moon said, more kids just came in. Sun wanted to keep trying to talk to him, but he had no idea what he would even say. A part of him didn't want to acknowledge it at all, like the 28th would become real if he mentioned her name. She, she can't be dead. She can't be dead. She can't be dead. Fanny had been just as old as these kids when he was introduced to her. He had to babysit her quite often while her dad was keeping the company afloat. Did... Did Sun do something wrong back then? Why else would she grow up to become a murderer? If he was the problem in the formula, were these new kids also going to become murderers? Sun slammed a lock over those thoughts. Don't think about her. Don't think about her. Sun mentally set a timer to keep track of how long the hide-and-seek game would be going on, and lowered himself back down to the padded floor, greeting the two newcomers. It was the twins, Nora and Aaron, their faces lighting up when they saw him. <gasps> Mr. Sun! What happened to- Welcome back! He interrupted, reminding himself to keep the smile on. I it's so good to see you all again! They ran up to him, springing out of the ball pit to give him a hug. Aaron asked, Why were you gone for so long? Mama won't tell us. Don't worry about that, Sun repeated, still keeping track of how long he had to find the kids in the play area before they got bored. Do you want to go and help me find hidden people? We're playing hide and seek. Yeah! The same red triangle from this morning flashed in the bottom corner of his vision, alerting him that it was now seven o'clock. It was time for a check-in. Sun dropped what he was doing, heading towards the stairs that led up to the entrance of the daycare. He glanced back one more time to the kids, hoping that they wouldn't notice him leaving as he dragged the golden doors out of the way. When he stuck his head out of the daycare, he almost immediately jumped back, narrowly avoiding a collision with Miss Taylor. She was standing right there, face to face with him, her foot tapping impatiently. He gave her a wary smile, keeping still like he was supposed to as she reached up and pulled on his collar, ensuring that it was still properly attached. Even though he didn't dare to speak a word to her, the stress of the unattended children grew behind his forced grin. Every second that he spent out here was another second where something else could be going wrong in the daycare. The moment Miss Taylor's fingers left his neck, Sun leaped back down to the ground floor, determined to make up for that slight interruption. He had to go find the hiders. His time was up and he needed to be at least in their field of view so they didn't think that he had forgotten about them. He passed Emily and Tyler, quickly checking to make sure that they weren't eating the toy blocks before using the ceiling cord to zip up to the play place to begin searching. His sense of their hiding spots were still how he left it, so he began to wander around the play place while peeking beneath beams and around corners, purposefully passing up several of them while pretending to look stumped. This whole routine, despite being a little dumb, always made the children laugh. So, Sun quickly fell into the more playful part of his programming, trying to escape from the unsettling darkness lingering in the back of his head. Hmm, wow, you guys are getting good at this, Sun said, coming to a stop with his hands on his hips. I swear, I've checked everywhere. Everywhere except... <laughs> a suppressed giggle rose up from a plastic tunnel. Sun doubled back and leaned down to zero in on Jess. A tiny, sock-covered foot snatched up out of sight, too late to get away from him. 
Wait a second! Sun kept up the show, crawling up into the tunnel, the little girl squeaking as he got closer. And gotcha! <laughs> Sun dragged her into a hug while Jess squealed. No! Sun backed out of the tunnel, letting her go and telling her, Now, go help me find the others. I'll get George, Jess said. I know where he is. No! George yelled from far away, only sparking the giddiness of Jess as she began to hunt down her friend. Sun decided to find Sylvia next, ascending a level or two before wandering around a cluster of rubbery obstacles, poking his head out to try and track down the excited little toddler. But something was wrong. Deeply, horribly wrong. He was smiling, he was laughing at the right times, he was acting out the game like he was supposed to. But he just felt so empty. He rubbed at his chest and then his face, trying to get the feeling to go away. It wasn't. A chill fluttered in his gut. No, 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 this wasn't right. He had to be happy, he had to play, and he had to like it. Don't think about her, don't. Sylvia kept darting back, changing her position back and forth, eventually deciding to make a run for it. Before she could get very far, Sun swept her up into another hug. I found you! Was that enthusiastic enough? Was he smiling right? He strained to keep it up. Sylvia didn't seem to notice. That was good. Maybe if he just kept doing this, the happiness would come back. Fanny... Fanny had played with him just like this every single day until she got too old for the daycare. He could still remember her little laugh. He could still remember the happy smile on her face, all the silly games that she invented and passed around the playground to the other kids. Pain began to flood up his throat, melting his thoughts into a blurry mess. He missed her. He missed her so much that it hurt. He felt his eyes flickering, his jaw and lips trembling as he tried to retain the smile. No, he couldn't break down now, not here, not in front of the kids. Stop thinking about her, just stop, you're going to ruin it! The sound of angry huffing coming from the ground floor drew his attention away from that dark place. Someone was arguing. Sun tried to snap himself out of it, squeezing his way out of the play place, swinging down from the ceiling cord to deal with the new problem. He just had to keep working, to keep his mind off of things. Emily was curled protectively over some sort of plushie, while a very red-faced Rachel tried to dig past her arms and steal it from her. No, I want to be Freddy, Rachel was saying. I got him first! Of course, there never seemed to be enough toys to go around here. But that might just be because everyone wanted to be Freddy. What is going on here? Son asked as he approached. Emily stole Freddy! Did not! Turns out, Emily hadn't stolen Freddy, but Rachel said that she called dibs before her while she was still at home. To try and defuse the situation, Sun found another Freddy toy for Rachel. But she didn't want that one, she wanted the toy that Emily had, and Emily was already stubbornly refusing to give up her Freddy toy, and before Sun could reteach them the concept of sharing, several more kids slid down into the ball pit. There's Moon began. I know, Sun sighed. The familiar stress was returning. He tried to fend it off with a wider smile, but the warmth just wasn't reaching his chest. Come on, come on, keep going. Mornings are supposed to be easy. Sun greeted Dylan, Theo, Kaylee, and Amber, avoiding their questions and remembering to translate in ASL for Theo, letting them play with the ones on the floor. Just when Sun was about to return to the play place and make sure they weren't fighting, a scream from the slide pierced the air. Alarms began to blare in Sun's head as he rushed into the ball pit, sticking his head up the slide, expecting to see a kid that had gotten stuck. Instead, all that he saw was ten grabby fingers that latched onto the sides of his face. Ow! Hey! Sun tried to retract, but that movement only made the sudden yanking on his sun rays even more painful. The maniacal <laughs> laughter of the kid filled his ears as Sun pulled him out of the slide, his neck bent awkwardly to try and alleviate the pulling on his rays. Peter! Please let me go! That's not very nice! Sun tried, already knowing who it was without even having to open his eyes. Peter's fingernails dug into his rays with the third and final pull before releasing him and dropping down into the ball pit. The little menace disappeared beneath the colorful balls, still cackling like a goblin. Peter did this every day. 
The moment that he and his friends found out how sensitive Sun's rays were, they made it a game to test his patience at every opportunity. Ah! Rule breaker! Sun yelled at him, digging through the ball pit to try and find him. That's five minutes in the timeout corner, Peter! It took a ridiculous amount of effort to wrangle Peter down, but even though he was now pouting in the timeout corner, Sun knew that he was going to escape the moment that he turned away. Still, there was nothing that Sun could really do about this. It's not like he was allowed to spank him or ground him. That was up to the parents, and judging by the few interactions Sun had with Peter's parents, this little boy was going to get away with it. Sun sighed, rubbing the ray that he had pulled, making sure that it hadn't torn. Sun did not hate any of the children here. He couldn't. It was a wrong feeling. But Peter and his friends... A new thought crossed his mind, one that he wouldn't have been bothered by before. What if Peter grew up to be a murderer too? What if Sun was doing something wrong? What if he was raising another little monster? He swallowed down that concept when one of the kids tugged on his striped pants to ask for snacks. He set off to retrieve them, but once he returned, he found them all huddled together shoulder to shoulder underneath one of the coiling slides. I heard she's gonna haunt this place now, Tyler whispered. Do you think she's coming back? <laughs> Hello, everyone! Sun leaned down to get a look at them, holding out the chips. Here, we can all- Sun, how'd you stop the rabbit lady? Amber asked. My brother said you did it! I, I, don't- I, uh- He stammered, buffering. Moon shriveled up even further. The empty space inside of him began to hurt. No, no, he wasn't supposed to be sad. Miss Taylor was going to see and... <laughs> uh, d don't worry about that. The story is too scary for you. Sun popped the smile back on again. Here, let's eat chips. Which ones do you want? He apparently didn't get the right flavors, leading to him going back and forth between the cabinets where he kept the food. The kids kept changing their minds and trying to snatch packets from each other, eventually leading to them ignoring him as he told them not to make a mess. Things were already getting out of hand, and according to the sudden thumping from the slide, more were coming. Davis and Mark and Reed and Matthew, there were now 18 kids under his care, and he knew fully well that that number was going to triple by 10 o'clock. Things were slipping, sliding. His mind kept flashing to the aching inside of him, trying to knock him off balance. He strained to keep the smile on, to keep it on at all costs, especially since it was almost 8 o'clock. Don't think about her, don't think about her, stop thinking about her. Sun ran away from the new kids' questions, dodging and distracting them with every game that he could think of. But then there were more kids, of course there were more kids. Nathan and Ezekiel and Corey and Haley. He had to greet them and deflect their questions all over again, pushing them to join the games that were running wild to the playground. Red triangle, red triangle, it was eight o'clock! Sun broke off from a game of tag, not slowing down as he raced up the stairs, throwing the doors open. He tried to suppress his heavy breathing, keeping still as she tugged on the collar, her horn-rimmed glasses glinting at him. Once Taylor was gone, Sun plunged back down into the chaos, desperately trying to stay afloat. He was currently participating in three separate games of tag, running back and forth between the art room and the play place, passing the toy box every few rotations to make sure no fights were going on over the Freddy plushies. Peter snuck up behind him and pulled his rays a second time, making him stop and waste his energy trying to keep Peter in the timeout corner. More kids were coming, Iris and Olivia and Penelope and Glory. He greeted them, avoided their questions, convinced them to play rather than interrogate him. 26 kids, there were 26 kids now. Despite two consciousnesses doing all that they could to keep track of their surroundings, both Sun and Moon knew that it wouldn't be enough once the rest of the regulars joined in. When the red triangle appeared next time, Sun was confused, checking his internal clock. It was only 8.25, it, it couldn't be the hourly check of his shock collar. His manager calling him at this time could only mean one thing. Oh no. The thought of what was coming made doom flood through him. He ungracefully disengaged from a game of freeze tag and made his way up the stairs, every step sending fear crawling up his legs. Moon was bracing for it too, making them both nauseous despite the fact that they didn't even have stomachs. As he put his hand on the golden doorknob, he took several deep breaths, preparing himself. When he opened it up, he was met with the combined power of two angry adults. Both his manager and a random lady had their arms crossed over their chests, brows nearly touching in their displeasure. 
The unidentified lady brushed her pale hair out of her face, turning her nose up at him like he had just presented her with a dead rat. And there, beside the lady's legs, was Devin, a little kid who was currently busy imitating the sounds of crying without the addition of any real tears. Sun had no idea what this is about, but before he could say anything, the lady was more than happy to begin. Well, I am so sorry for this interruption, but I want to have a talk with you, the woman said, her nasally voice laced with thinly veiled fury. Who exactly do you think you are, mister? Sun looked to his manager, but she didn't give any explanation as to what was going on. The daycare attendant? Sun replied slowly. Okay, you don't have to be ugly with me, you know, the lady snapped, putting an arm around the child's shoulder. You've already done enough. The least you could do is show some respect. Sun forced himself into compliance, knowing exactly the sort of thing that was about to go down. He just smiled wider and said, What's the problem, ma'am? She immediately launched into it. Well, I dropped him off at this place because it was supposed to be a quality daycare service. But for some reason, you decided to take away all of his toys and make him sit there and do nothing the whole time. Ah, son remembered that happening. It was literally the day before the daycare was closed, which should be enough to explain why he had not thought of it since then. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I had to take his toys away because he was throwing them at other kids, Sun explained, keeping his tone as level as he could manage. He got them back after ten minutes in time out. But, of course, she wasn't listening, interrupting him with, Devin would never do anything like that! I just don't understand how you could get the thought into your head that you have the right to do this! I'm sorry, I didn't take the toys away indefinitely, Sun said. He got them back later. No, I didn't, Devin whined. You made me sit in the corner for no reason. What did I even do? You were throwing your toys at the other kids, Sun tried, even though he knew that he was about to get drowned out. I had to take them away so you wouldn't hurt- I was not doing that! Devin started fake crying again. You're lying! He's lying, Mama! I didn't even do anything! Sun's attention drifted to the left, where he saw five more kids plunging their way down the slide. Bella, Damien, Charles, Roderick, and Mary. He had to get back in the daycare soon. Things were getting louder behind him. The troublemakers were noticing his absence and making good use of it. I never consented for you to punish him. The mom stamped her foot, getting even louder. You don't have any right to treat my boy this way. I came all the way up here and paid a lot of my hard-earned money, and you didn't even do what I asked for. She turned to Miss Taylor next. Your robot needs an update. Taylor clearly wasn't about to intervene, leaving Sun stranded as he tried to figure out what would make her go away faster. I'm so sorry about that, Sun told her. I, I promise I won't. You should be sorry, the lady just continued to rant. This is ridiculous. I asked for one job and it still couldn't do it right. I'm sorry. I was trying to stop them from hurting the other kids. Maybe I shouldn't have been so harsh. I yeah, you shouldn't have, she agreed even more aggressively. You know what? That isn't really upsetting me. What's upsetting me is that you keep trying to turn it around on me. I'm sorry. Sun was growing rather exasperated. Here, I I'll try to get you a refund. He turned to his manager. Can we give her a refund? Miss Taylor gave him a death glare, not responding for several agonizing seconds. The metal beneath his collar tingled, realizing that he shouldn't have suggested that. But still, now that he said it, the lady would not be accepting anything else. So, after letting the question dry out for a bit, Taylor finally nodded and headed over to the booth where the parents would sign their kids up for the daycare service, flipping through a few papers. I'll have you know, I am not coming back here, the lady grumbled. Thank God, both Sun and Moon thought at the same time. The moment he was let go, Sun launched himself back into the daycare, the wall of noise and lights hitting him like a cannon shot. Six extra kids had entered the daycare while he wasn't looking. Wilma, Todd, Aiden, Natalie, May, Louise. 37 kids. There was now 37 kids in here. There were about 500 things going on at the same time, and he was yanked between one to the other, trying to make up for all this lost time. Kids were screaming, they were fighting and crying, someone was crying. Tag! It was tag! Freeze tag! 
Kids were arguing about who had been frozen during freeze tag, and he had to break up that argument, whirling around to try and pinpoint the source of the crying. But then he saw a kid trying to climb up one of the foam block towers, about to fall off, about to- Sun dove and caught him before they fell, telling them to not do that anymore, earning a pouty face in return. Crying, crying, someone was still crying, where were they? Uh, Mary, it was Mary! He spotted her curled up on the floor against a wall, her arms covering her face. Sun rushed over to her, ringing the bells on his wrists to let her know where he was. Hey, 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 I'm here, Sun told her, giving the little girl a tight hug. You're in the corner behind the play place. Here, I can show you to the others. Guilt kept on stabbing him, even after the situation was controlled. Mary was a child born blind, meaning that he really should be paying more attention to her, but he just didn't have any extra time to give her. He was taking care of every single one of them here, and that made it impossible to take care of any of them. Out of nowhere, Cory fell and scraped his knee, knocking Sun out of those thoughts. While he was dealing with that, Moon yelled in his head, uh, Someone's about to get paint spilled on them! Wait, wait, hold on, I have to do this first! Sun said. He cleaned the scrape and applied ointment while Moon still warned him to hurry the longer that the paint spilling threat lasted. Come on, come on, put the band-aid on, hurry, hurry, go get Peter, go get Peter, you know he's going to do it! He sprang up after sending Cory off, racing to the art room. The art room was cut into the same wall that Sun's tower was set in. Long folding tables lined up with seemingly endless supplies of paintbrushes and crayons and construction paper. There was not a day that went by where the art room stayed as clean as it had been at the beginning of his shift. Uh-uh-uh! No throwing paint, Peter! Sun snatched up the art supplies, sending him to the timeout corner. In that time, Damien managed to sneak up behind him, easily scaling Sun's back like a squirrel, grabbing onto two of his rays and literally hanging his entire weight off of them. Sun cried out, nearly collapsing on top of Damien, but this time he wasn't letting go, squealing with laughter as Sun tried to gently pry his sharp little fingers off. Hey, can you stop that? Cory whacked Damien on the ankle with a Roxanne plushie. You're hurting him! No, I'm not. It's just a big toy, Damien argued, pulling again. It can't feel anything. My dad said so. Sun tried his best not to react to the intense pain shooting through his head, knowing that if he started crying, Damien would just be encouraged to do it more. <laughs> Rule breaker! Damien, you're going to the timeout corner, Sun declared, finally managing to free himself. Yeah, Cory agreed, smacking him with the plushie a second time. Rule breaker! Damien snickered the whole march towards the timeout corner, proudly plopping himself down, wearing the title of Rule Breaker like a badge. Cory said that he would make sure Damien would stay in the corner, and Sun gladly accepted the help, even though he wasn't sure if Cory would actually be able to stop him. When he turned around, yet another set of new children shot out of the slide, adding to the overflowing ball pit. Brendan, Maddie, Lisa, and Jacqueline. <gasps> Mr. Sun, why were you gone for so long? Brendan asked, not even two seconds after his entrance. Sun found himself just standing there on the daycare floor, knee-deep in a swarm of children, fighting to get control of his breathing. He tried to kick himself into a more acceptable behavior. Brandon didn't know that 37 children before him had already asked the same exact horrible question. Sun was supposed to be friendly. What was wrong with him? Oh, no reason. Just took a vacation. Sun chirped, careful not to step on any toes as he made his way closer to the ball pit. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I'm fine. I've got it under control. Can you play with us, Mr. Sun? Iris appeared from nowhere, followed by a knot of her excited friends. Why didn't that question give him joy? It was in his nature to be playful. He was supposed to be playful. But everything was just so... much. And he felt like so little. Like a tiny, hollow, plastic cup at the bottom of an overflowing trash bin. Are, are you okay, Mooney? Sun asked, not really sure what else to do. I, I'm fine, I'm just, I'm just listening, Moon mumbled. Sun tried to snap himself out of it, replying to Iris, Yeah, of course, what do you want to play? He was trying, he was trying so hard, he was doing all the usual goofs that he did during freeze tag. F freezing into silly positions, cutting off mid-scream when he was tagged. It was still sparking the same reaction out of the kids, something that he should feel mirrored in himself. But it just wasn't happening. It was like he was trying to start a fire by rubbing two crayons together. 
As he played, more kids slid down the slide, every one of them forcing him to repeat the same lines that he had spoken almost 50 times now. Garrett and Alice and Jackson and Harriet and Vivian. By now, there weren't just a few friend groups all spaced apart around the playground. There were children everywhere, absolutely everywhere, plugging up the slides and crawling all over the swings and stacking block towers far above their tiny heads. There were 46 kids in here and he felt like he was drowning in them. Nine o'clock! The red triangle appeared in the corner of his vision again, making him grate out a frustrated sigh. He quickly corrected that, forcing the smile back on, heading back up the stairs. He met Miss Taylor like before, letting her check the collar, shifting his weight from foot to foot as he waited, both him and Moon listening to the sounds behind them. Children were squealing in excitement, there was a few whining rants, one of the kids crying- oh, Wait, crying? The moment that Miss Taylor let him go, Sun took a dive onto the floor of the daycare, chasing after the sound. Sonny! Damien's kicking me! The timeout corner was empty, and Damien was blowing raspberries at Haley, insisting that he hadn't even touched her. Sun sent him back to the corner with a stern warning, then picked up on a squabble in the play place, rushing up to try and deal with that. More kids came in as another hide-and-seek again began. Jaden and Puneet and Nicole and Eugene, and he had to explain all over again that the rabbit lady story was too scary. If, if he had known what she was going to grow into, could he have stopped it from happening? If he was just a better parent, would the thought of murder not even cross her mind? What did he do wrong? Stop! Don't think about her! Don't! Smile, smile, smile! He led Nicole, one of the auditory-sensitive children, to the quiet corner so she could read on her own, trying to keep a tab on her to make sure nobody bothered her while he wasn't watching. The quiet corner was a sort of hidden-away space at the back, midnight blue curtains shielding a space layered of fluffy pillows and blankets. A small bookshelf squatted at the back, right beside a tub filled with stim toys for those who needed that sort of thing to keep calm. The only reason Peter and Damien didn't mess up the quiet corner anymore was because of Sun's firm rule that if any of them step foot over there, he'll set Moon loose on them. They listened to Moon's scares more than they listened to Sun's lectures. Sun really wished that he could spend more time checking up on Nicole, but it was similar to Mary's situation. He just didn't have enough time. Now kids wanted a piggyback ride, but he still couldn't find Damien and was getting worried that he was about to jump him again. Little sweaty faces crowded in on him, chasing each other around with ear-piercing squeals, pulling each other's hair, dumping crayons all over the floor. Some of them wanted soda, but others wanted to be held. He kept Mark in his arms, still trying to sort through all the noise in the room to find Damien while going to get snacks. More kids climbed on him after seeing Mark doing it, all saying that they wanted to be carried while Sun parkours around the obstacle course they had built from the wooden blocks, which obviously was not allowed. <laughs> Pressure was building, Mark was now chewing on one of the sunbeams on his head, another few still trying to climb up his legs. Mark's little teeth hurt the sensitive points, but he couldn't move his head fast enough to dislodge him, scared of making Mark fall and hurt himself, so he was reduced to just trying to laugh and play with him at the same time, saying, Okay, please let go, that's nasty, you know the rules, Mark, no biting. Do you want to go to the timeout corner? More and more kids came down the slide, Isaac and Jay and Riley and Jasmine, 54! There were 54 children under his care, and they were beginning to blur and melt into each other. His only hope was that the number would finally stop climbing once morning passed. Something was wrong with him. He, he couldn't keep up today. He was so tired, and he checked the clock. It was only 9.21. The usual happiness he felt playing with the kids just wasn't coming. They hugged him affectionately just like before, tugging him around so he could play new games with them as always, but... He wasn't able to summon up the cheer anymore. He became frantic at that realization. What was wrong with him? Was he broken? He really didn't want to go to parts and services. He hated that place as much as dogs hated the vet. But why else would he be so... A little green-eyed girl wanted up. He froze. The din of noise around him faded, his gaze locked with hers, lost in the deep ivy color of her irises. Her impact with the cold cement ground. Sun wasn't awake for it, but he could hear the memory of it reflecting off of Moon's side of their shared mind. The way her chest caved in beneath his hand, the crunching and squishing and popping of shattered bones and pulverized flesh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please come back. I didn't mean it. Please come back to me. Please just wake up. 
Sonny? The girl's tiny voice snapped him out of it. It wasn't her. Sun shook himself, the noise of the overcrowded daycare chugging back into motion around him. It was just Olivia, a little blonde girl who was lowering her hands now, uncanny green eyes glistening. It wasn't her. She, she wasn't even related to her. Olivia just happened to have green eyes and blonde hair too. It was a rare combination, but obviously not unheard of. Don't react. Don't cry. Don't let her know anything's wrong. You'll get in trouble. You'll ruin everything. Sun popped the smile back on the best that he could, saying, Oh, sorry. I, I, I just, I... He was never able to finish that sentence, but to make up for the awkward pause, he just picked her up like she wanted and circled back around to check on the art room. A rabbit. He faltered again. Matthew was drawing a rabbit. She was like the Afton guy, Matthew was explaining. She liked rabbits. Sun darted in to interject, still keeping Olivia on one arm. Okay, that's, that's a lovely drawing, Matt, but don't worry about the rabbit lady, okay? She's gone now. But she was super evil, Matthew insisted, an excited gleam in his eyes. I heard she revived Afton like a zombie! The other kids gasped dramatically. <gasps> Whoa, did she do that? Is he coming to get us? No, no. Sun waved that away with a fake laugh, condensation dripping down his face. No, both of them are gone, okay? She didn't revive him. That would be silly. He set Olivia down and directed them away from that with... Here, let's play Marco Polo. Doesn't that sound fun? A good section of the kids left Matthew's presentation, following excitedly as he dove into the ball pit. Marco! Polo! The kids floundered around with their eyes closed, finding him, finding each other, having fun. They started climbing him again, but at least these ones weren't going for his raise, the only consequence being that his weak arm was currently protesting at the odd angle it was being held at. Sun was on his back, the kids giggling all around him, apparently trying to make-believe drown him in the ball pit. At first, he just played along like he was supposed to, flailing about and screeching dramatically, all of the kids laughing like it was the funniest thing that they had ever seen. But unfortunately, this act just made them even more riled up, pulling on his arm, sending a bolt of pain through his damaged socket. <laughs> okay, okay, you're getting a little rough, don't you think? <laughs> One of them took a running leap and cannonballed directly into his gut, knocking the breath out of him. Sun rolled over, putting more effort into pulling away, telling them, <laughs> Okay, okay, that's enough. Go play something else, okay? Surprisingly, their grins dampened when he rose his voice. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sun, Mark said. Did I hurt you? No, nope, you didn't, Sun said, wincing a bit. It's okay, just don't cannonball me again. Mark actually listened to him, a very rare event in Sun's life, continuing their game in the ball pit without being as rough. <laughs> they were all so happy. Their cute little faces were shining, just a bunch of happy little babies so glad to see him again. He wanted to feel something when they jumped up for a hug or showed him a castle that they had built. But instead, he just felt tired, empty. Why wasn't it working? Why was he so... Mr. Sun, Mr. Sun, can we play hide and seek? I bet I can find you, Mary called, seeming to be in a better mood now that she had reunited with her group of friends. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Be careful, Sun gasped, dragging the miserable smile up again as he watched Mary navigate towards him at an impressively rapid pace. Come on, he kicked himself. Be happy, keep smiling. You love your job, what's wrong with you? Don't think about her, don't. Mary finally found him, and he congratulated her on her progress. Her friends giggled madly as she turned to try and find them next. He warned them to be gentle, but then found himself wandering the playground aimlessly. It felt like some sort of gray sludge was clogging up his gears. He determinedly pushed back on it, trying to focus on listening for them. He was supposed to be playing hide-and-seek. <laughs> a giggle. He turned, leaning around a beam to find one hiding beneath. There you are. <gasps> it was little Fanny. Sun yelped, falling back. The girl jumped too, tilting her tiny blonde head. <sighs> Not her, he sighed to himself. It was just Olivia again. Not 
I'm sorry, you kind of scared me. Sun chuckled, sunbeams fluttering nervously around his face. Let's, let's go find the others. <laughs> son, son, someone's screaming! Moon hollered, impaling him with a lightning bolt of fear. This fear was not just the worry of paint being spilled or the worry of a rule breaker causing more mischief. This was life or death panic. Screaming, a kid was screaming. No, no, no. Sun found the nearest exit and dove down to the ground, absolute terror overcoming him. Children rushed around him in pursuit of their friends, their hair flying in all directions, obscuring his view of each face. He skidded to a stop, surveying the scene, then sighed in relief. Peter was being a troublemaker again, knocking over one of the block towers that a teary-eyed Nathan was trying to keep upright. <sighs> Peter! Sun snapped, marching up towards him. Don't push people's towers over! Nathan worked very hard on that! Oh! <laughs> Before he knew it, a pair of sneakers connected with his back, and his rays were nearly yanked out of their sockets. He spun around, trying to hold onto the child to lessen the weight on his faceplate, recognizing Damien. Ah, rule breaker! Both of you are rule breakers! Sun said, trying to free himself from Damien's digging fingernails. You're both going in the timeout corner right now! Twenty minutes this time! Even though it sucked to wrangle the both of them into the corner and keep them there despite their various escape attempts, he was somewhat glad that the screams had only been in reaction to bullying. He tried to leave the remains of the panic behind as he helped a sobbing Nathan rebuild his castle. It was nothing. The kid was fine, so he was fine. He looked to the clock, hopefully. 9.44. <sighs> Sighing, he turned back to the congested daycare. At this point, almost no individual words were distinguishable from each other, the crackling of conversations pouring out of each of the children's mouths. It was all just noise, 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 the kids screeching and giggling and fumbling on the foam-padded floors as they played. The smell of sweat and dirty socks was beginning to take over the fizz of cleaning chemicals, making his bleached fingers twitch in the urge to clean up. But of course, with so many children replacing messes of even more messes, starting the cycle now would be completely pointless. He broke up an argument about who got to be infected in a zombie tag game, leaping up to the play place to disperse another separate squabble. The quiet corner was still alright, though Nicole was too nervous to go to the bathroom on her own, so Sun had to slow down and help her get through the rest of the chaotic daycare without being triggered into a panic. After that, he led Nicole back to the corner, bursting into the open to try and catch up on everything that had gone wrong while he was gone. Sun ran past the art room, skidding to a stop when he saw a kid eating a crayon. He confiscated the crayon, told her why she couldn't do that, had an excessively long debate on human rights, and then had to speed off to stop someone from climbing back up the slide. <gasps> no, no, get down here! Sun fretted, following Brandon up through the colorful tube. No climbing up the slide! <laughs> but you're climbing up the slide! Brandon laughed. Rule breaker, rule breaker, whoa, whoa, whoa! Just as Sun got a hold of his ankle, thumping sounds from above sent dread through him. Another kid was sliding down. Sun! Moon shrieked. I know! Sun grabbed Brandon and yanked him into his arms, letting go of the slide's walls and shooting downwards, only barely escaping being clobbered by the entering kid. Brandon squealed in delight as they landed with a crash in the ball pit, the other entering kid coming through a moment after, both seeming to find the situation hilarious. Ah, now that is why we don't climb up the slide, Sun scolded, dropping Brandon back in the ball pit. <laughs> that was fun, Brandon giggled. Can we do it again? Oh, yeah, can I slide down with Sunny too? Tanner, the kid who had just entered, latched onto his leg. Me next, me next! Others started jumping up excitedly at the new game, the colorful balls of the pit rolling in a collective clatter as they crowded in on him. No! No climbing up the slide! Sun blocked the entrance of it with his body. You could get hurt! <laughs> Another kid came shooting down the slide, barreling into him and sending them both crashing into the ball pit, which the other children found completely hysterical. Sun groaned, face down in a tub of plastic, trying to gather the will to get up. The smell of rubber against sweaty skin tunneled its way into his nostrils, drying the back of his throat. The kid who had just rammed into him, Everett, crouched down next to him and asked, <laughs> Hi, Mr. Sun. What happened in here? I heard there was something about a crazy rabbit lady. Sun sighed, the smell of body odor trying to suffocate him. 
I don't want to talk about it, he said, finally pushing himself upright and letting multicolored balls tumble off of his shoulders. Son scolded Brandon and sent him to the timeout corner, the other kids grumbling in disappointment that he wasn't allowing them to get hurt. But at this point, he had absolutely no time to apologize properly because the rest of the children needed to be checked on before one of them did something dangerous. He was monitoring the ones that were snacking because they were taking bites far too big to be safe, but then one of the younger children had an accident, yet another asking for tissues for their snotty nose at the same time. While he gave the accident kid new clothes and handed out tissues, Moon was warning him about a kid that was throwing a tantrum of unknown origin, but Sun had to clean up first, hoping that they wouldn't start throwing things over there until he had time to address the disturbance. Right as he was about to figure out what was going on, the red triangle appeared at 10 o'clock. A part of him wanted to go to the tantrum first, but he knew how Taylor would get if he was even 30 seconds late. He balanced in the open doorframe of the daycare, waiting as she tugged on his collar, listening intently to the chaos going on behind him. Please don't start fighting, please don't start fighting, Please don't start fighting. Sun dove off of the stairs the second she turned her back, while Moon warned him, Go, go, run! I know, I know, I'm trying! Before Sun could get to the tantrum, Maddie climbed up on top of him and began squealing like a mouse that had been stepped on. Her brother began to circle his legs, barking like a dog, while she precariously balanced on his shoulders to get away. <laughs> Sun, help me! The sister giggled, her little sticky fists causing twinges of pain in his rays. He's trying to get Go away, Brandon! Sun knew that it was silly, but the sound of Brandon imitating a dog sent needles up his heels, his phobia returning as bad as ever. Brandon, please, no barking! Sun begged, an uncontrollable shiver grinding its way up his spine. As he tried to make it to the tantrum, Brandon still chased after him, this time making hissing noises instead. A cat or a snake, he didn't know. <laughs> Jackson, what's wrong? Sun finally located the angry little boy, trying to ignore the fact that Brandon was still circling him and Maddie was blocking half of his vision with a hand covered in Cheeto dust. Tyler is hogging all the purple paint! Jackson complained, tiny face puffed up in tomato red. One look at the art room proved that Jackson's tantrum was somewhat justified. Tyler was taking an entire bucket of purple paint and absolutely destroying a poor soggy paper with it, practically reducing it to paper mache. <gasps> Tyler, you can't- Ow! Brandon had bitten him, making him fall over, his sister still screeching in his ear and overloading his audio sensors. Ah! Brandon, no biting! We talked about this! Sun tried to pry him off, but soon saw that it was hopeless and just got up to teach Tyler about sharing art supplies while Brandon gnawed on his ankle. He would have to send Brandon to the timeout corner once he got enough time to address him. Sun, come play tag! Sun, Roderick is cheating! Sun, my tooth fell out! Sun was overheating already. No, no, he wasn't supposed to overheat until noon. He tried to take in deep breaths to cool his systems, but it wasn't really working. He checked the clock. 10.06. He wasn't going to make it. Good lord, he wasn't going to make it. Loud sounds burst through the air, bored children becoming rowdy the longer it took for him to join their game. He was distracted by helping Amber clean up her mouth after she pulled out her first baby tooth, and the rest of the kids were getting antsy without him regulating them. Brandon and his sister finally left him alone once Sun put him in the corner, but Sun had a feeling that their next game would be disastrous. The moment that Brandon was free from the corner, he declared, I just had a new idea for a game! And then dove into the ball pit and began to throw the colorful plastic balls at the other kids. They threw plushies at Brandon in retaliation, building block towers as defenses, turning the ground floor into a vicious game that resembled a snowball fight. <laughs> Children, please! Sun hollered once he was done helping Amber. Stop fighting! You're all rule breakers now! For that, he got smacked in the face by a Monty toy, the kids howling, GET HIM! NO! Sun dove out of the way and for the next eternity tried to defuse the situation and distract them. He got into the ball pit and started chasing Brandon around, who still kept throwing the balls at him and squealing. When he finally snatched him up and dragged him back into the timeout corner, the other kids in the blocked towers were switching their targets to each other, the playground becoming a war zone in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Children, please! Can't we play something else? Sun yelled, waving his arms around and trying to avoid getting hit by the toys flying through the air. No throwing things! It's against the- ah! 
Davis leaped up onto him, and Sun couldn't get him off, so he just let him hang off his shoulders while Sun tried to stop them all from killing each other. Sun began to take up every toy that was thrown at him, returning them by the armful to one of the toy boxes and going back out to reclaim more. Kids kept on sneaking around to the chosen box to take the confiscated plushies back out, but eventually he managed to get most of them inside. Sun had no choice but to sit on the lid to keep it closed, the children all valiantly trying to open the box even though that task would be completely impossible for them. Sun stood guard as a mob of whining toddlers tried to get past, arguing with them, ah, No! You can't play with the toys anymore! No more toys for another half hour! You've all been very bad rule breakers! Go play something else! Ah, you're no fun, Peter called from the back, others grumbling in agreement as they gave up and stalked away. <sighs> Sun sighed, standing up again, his legs wobbling. He, he held onto the toy box, waiting for his head to stop spinning, taking deep breaths. He rubbed at the rays that framed his face, wincing at how sore they had become. Tired, so, so tired. He glanced back to his internal clock. 10.13. Come on, come on, you can do this, he wheezed to himself through a gritted smile. Noon isn't very far away, really. It's about to be 10.30, which is practically 11, which is almost 12. He checked the quiet corner to make sure none of the more introverted kids had been affected by the toy war, helping to calm down Nicole when he saw her curled up with her head between her knees. Sonny, do you want to play? Emily bounced up to him as he left the quiet corner. She had a four square ball in her hands, saying, I made a new game! Hide and tag and dodgeball! <laughs> she threw the ball in his face, and unfortunately, it crumpled his pointy nose on impact. Of course, she started crying at that, thinking that she had hurt him, and Sun had to scramble to explain that his nose was supposed to be malleable like that. He blew up the nose again, reassured her that it hadn't hurt, and then pushed her to a friend so they could play with her instead. The kids seem to have forgotten about the toy ban now, but at this point, Sun didn't even care, because at least they weren't throwing them at each other. They were instead separating into different playing groups while the hide-and-tag-and-dodgeball game ravaged the playground. Moon kept on warning him about some kid crying, but he couldn't figure out where he was, still trying to keep track of their hide-and-tag-and-dodgeball game, making sure that they weren't roughhousing too much. They started getting rowdier, some kids throwing the ball a little too hard, others taking that as a signal that it was a free-for-all. No, no, stop throwing the ball at each other! Sun snatched it up midair. But it's a dodgeball! Sylvia whined. It's supposed to be thrown! No, it's not! This is a four square ball! There's a very big difference! The kids chuckled as if it was part of a silly joke, but for once, Sun was being serious. <laughs> How is it different? Well, first of all, the four square ball is meant for four square, Sun lectured them. You're technically not even supposed to be using it for dodgeball at all. Then why weren't you stopping us before? Another kid called from a distance, hands cupped around his mouth so he could be heard. Because up until now, you were being nice about it, Sun said, brows raising. But now that you guys are throwing it hard and being all mean, I don't think I want you to play with it anymore. No, they started whining. No, we'll be nice. A part of Sun just wanted to let this slide and give the ball back, but he didn't want the reason that they play nice to be that he was threatening to take their fun away. So he began to explain. You play games to have fun, right? Yeah? If everyone's being rough and mean the whole time, then there's no point in playing at all, since it won't be fun anymore. Oh, I I'm sorry, Mr. Sun, Sylvia said, seemingly ashamed now. She was twiddling her thumbs, her downcast eyes sinking to the floor. Sun sighed, caving in. If you're going to play this game, you have to play nice, okay? Do you promise to play nice? We promise, the children chimed. He tossed the ball to Sylvia, they fled to go hide again, and he watched as they... as they continued to play just as roughly as they had before. <sighs> Sun blew out an exhausted breath, giving up on reasoning with them. He glanced at the time. 10.25, how is it only 10.25? He checked the physical clock on the wall of the art room, just to be sure. <sighs> yep, his internal clock was not off. The son tried to correct himself into a more positive attitude, knowing that this was not how he was supposed to be feeling. At least no more new kids were coming in. It seemed that 57 kids was as bad as it was going to get today. <laughs> no, darn it. 
He tried to put a cork on that thought. Not as bad as it was going to get, as good as it was going to get. He loved kids, he loved playing with them, he was supposed to be happy right now. He recalled what it was like when the daycare had been closed down. That had been so much worse than this. The loneliness had been like nothing he had ever felt before, not even having a sane moon to talk to. He wanted the kids to come back, he wanted it so badly, and now that they were all here, he could do nothing but complain? <sighs> come on, smile. He just kept on standing there in the torrent of children, not engaging with any of them at all, feeling like he was being dragged beneath quicksand. The sound of Fanny's fall. She had been so quiet all the way down like she herself hadn't even realized or accepted that she was about to die. But the sound when she landed, it was so loud in his head, so much louder than the commotion around him. He wasn't awake for that part. No, it, it was coming from... Moon? He cracked out. Everything else faded. It hurt. It hurt so bad, so suddenly, Sun had no time to prepare for this onslaught of emotion. Fanny loved to play hide and seek. She loved using the purple glitter glue on every single gift she ever gave him. She always helped him clean up, even when she was so little she couldn't pick up the mop without falling over. Memories that had once been cherished were now twisted into something monstrous, every one of those little happy moments coming with the foresight that she would grow up to become a... a murderer. There were no words to describe what it felt like to wake up in the maintenance room and have the technicians explain to him that not only was Vanny dead, but she had done the unthinkable to a helpless child only a few days prior. Why couldn't I save her? Why did she do this? What did I do wrong? Why did I let her go? The guilt and shame crashed into him like a physical force. Both him and his brother swept up into it, the edges of Sun's fake smile trembling. <laughs> no, 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 no. He covered his face, trying to hold it all in. No, he couldn't break down. Not now. He wasn't done with the shift. Why couldn't I save her? What did I do wrong? No, not now, not now, not in front of the kids. How could she ever do that to James? Was it me? Why else would she grow up into a monster? Not in front of the kids, not in front of the kids. Taylor, she's gonna know, she's gonna know, and it's gonna hurt so bad. If he didn't get a hold of himself, the electrocution would come back again. Tiny hands gripped at his back, the ray set beside his left eye, viciously tugged until he felt the stitches pop. <laughs> Stop! The desperation in his plead was completely lost on Peter as he laughed and held on for as long as he could, like it was some sort of sick game. Sun held his breath, keeping the devastation behind his eyes, doing everything that he could to pry Peter off of him without hurting the little boy. Once Peter scurried away, Sun didn't even bother scolding him. Instead, he was hit with the realization that he had not been paying attention to what was happening around him for at least half a minute. Half a minute too long. Wilma and May were fighting over a Chica plush. Somebody was screaming about not being able to find their favorite crayon. Kids were climbing on the support beams that held at the play place. Several were trying to do a balancing act on the big foam blocks about to fall. Sun threw himself at the nearest problem, accidentally plowing through someone's castle in the act of catching the fallen kid. And now they were crying, but he couldn't stop to help them because the kids climbing the outside of the play place had no idea how serious a fall of that height could get. <gasps> no, 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 you can't climb there! Who did that to the net?! The net that was normally supposed to keep them from doing this was shredded. Sun turned around just in time to see Damien running away with a pair of scissors. <gasps> no! No running with scissors! You're going to get hurt! Sun was yelling after Damien, pulling the other kids off of the play place. I'll get him! Jess came out of nowhere and tackled Damien like a linebacker, sending both of them crashing to the floor. Despite how well-meaning that was, it made Sun and Moon explode with panic. He chased them down, absolutely relieved to see that the scissors hadn't gone through one of their eyes, confiscating the sharp tool and scolding the both of them. He couldn't bring himself to put Jess in the timeout corner, but Damien definitely had to go. 
Now Sun was precariously trying to repair the net while simultaneously stopping the kids from climbing the unprotected play place. No, no, they're gonna break their necks! They'll be paralyzed for life! Moon was shrieking in his head, pushing him to hurry. Broken legs, broken arms, concussions! What are we going to say to their parents? What if they split their skulls open? What if they'll be sent into a coma that they never wake up from? Sun already knew that it was impossible to stop the spiral. He was so focused on keeping the kids from dying that he couldn't give his brother any real comforts. Moon wanted him to tell the children exactly why they can't do this, but Sun was worried that it may traumatize them to finally get an idea of how much their life could be ruined by this reckless act of rebellion. And then, at the absolute worst time, the red triangle appeared in his vision. Eleven o'clock. No, 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 he wasn't done fixing the net! Sun was sloppily trying to tape the two ends together, wrapping more and more layers over the tear, keeping the children back with one of his legs. If he didn't finish the job, they would begin climbing while he wasn't looking, and then all the horrible things from Moon's nightmares would come true. He decided that, even if he may get shocked for it, he would rather save the children from months in the hospital than please Taylor by being on time. The tape wasn't exactly meant to do this job, the majority of it refusing to stick to such an odd surface. He tried to thread strips of it through the holes of the net, tying it all together in double knots that would just have to do for now. Okay, nobody climb up the play place, Sun shouted. If I see any of you climbing the play place, I'm letting Moon out. No! Many tiny voices shrieked. The crowd scattered like he had announced that he was about to drop a grenade. The moment that he was sure the net would hold, Sun flew up the stairs, the doors bursting open just before he reached them. Sun pinwheeled backwards, the force of Miss Taylor's scowl akin to the burn of a flamethrower. He was completely paralyzed, every thought in his head frozen in ice, the pounding in his chest drowning out the noise of the daycare behind him. When Taylor lifted her hand, Sun snapped his eyes shut, his tightened shoulders nearly touching his retracted rays as he waited for it to happen. Instead of pressing the remote, Miss Taylor grabbed onto his collar and pulled him downwards, making him bend into an awkward position to meet her eye level. Look at me, she demanded, so close that he could smell her heavy layers of flowery perfume. He peeked an eye open, able to see every angle of her glasses, every vein in her eye, every individual black hair as it stretched to fit inside the bun strapped to her head. He waited. He waited. When he couldn't bear the silence any longer, he blurted out, I I'm sorry. I I'm really sorry. I, I know that I'm late, but, but the th th they were climbing up the play place and I had to stop them and I I'm sorry. He wanted to apologize a few hundred more times, but was worried that it would only make her even more agitated. Don't be late again, she snarled, every syllable drawn out like the serrated blade of a knife. She finally let him go, allowing him to retreat a few steps, the door slamming shut before he could say anything else. He knew that that wasn't the end of his punishment. The rest would come later, when no one else was around. Sun didn't have much time to prepare for that, forced to turn around and dive back off the stairs to keep up with everything. Kids fought each other, kids climbed all over him, kids spilled soda and threw toys. He was bitten nine more times, kept getting sneak attacked by Peter trying to pull his sun rays, and got hit in the face by wooden blocks more times than he cared to count. Noon was taking its sweet time. But finally, after an eternity of blurry fatigue and constant alertness, twelve o'clock finally caught up to him. When the clock chimed, he almost started weeping with relief. <sighs> oh, thank goodness. Okay, everyone, lunchtime! He started calling, trying his best to look unfazed as the children passed the news around, dozens of tiny lunchtimes sparkling around the crowd. The long tables and benches were cleared of art supplies by both him and the hungry children, putting away the paintbrushes in the sink and stuffing mixed matched crayons into their boxes. Sun unlocked the cabinet at the back that held the food, taking out an armful of crinkling paper bags filled with sandwiches, apple slices, and cookies. He began to hand them out to all of the kids as they picked their spots in the cleared tables, the art room being transformed into the lunchroom within a few minutes. His low battery ached at him, warning him that he was on 12%. He tried to ignore it as he got the kids situated, giving separate lunches to the ones still hiding in the quiet corner. Even though he knew that Moon would get to charge during nap time, Sun wasn't sure if he could wait that long. But, of course, they didn't have a choice. 
Sun was forced to endure the hollow weakness inside of him and stand guard in the lunchroom to watch the children eat. If he left the children unattended for even a moment, he couldn't bear the thought of one of them choking to death while he wasn't watching. There were a few arguments over trading food, a particularly tough one breaking out by Penelope, who didn't like the type of cheese on her sandwich and wanted to trade with an unwilling neighbor. Peter started tearing off pieces of bread and squishing it into tiny balls, flicking them at the other kids, eventually leading to him eating in the timeout corner like he always did. They made their way through the apples, picking out bruised spots and trading around green or red ones with each other. Then they got to the cookies. An entire market of trading opened up as they exchanged sugar cookies for chocolate ones, some liking the red sprinkles and others liking the blue ones, nibbling away at the M&Ms and leaving the doughy part behind. <laughs> he had one sweet moment inside the middle of the anxious cloud, where Ezekiel and a few of his friends walked up to him, all of them snickering and shushing each other. Sun tilted his head, knowing that they were up to something, watching as Ezekiel held up something in his hands and presented it to him. What's this? Sun asked. <laughs> I saved a cookie for you, Ezekiel said proudly. Sun was already ten steps ahead of this prank because Ezekiel had done it three other times before. <laughs> the cookie was made out of Play-Doh, much too brightly colored to pass for something edible. Instead of pointing that out, Sun played along and took the fake cookie, saying, <gasps> Wow, that's so nice of you, thank you! He bit into it, and even though he didn't actually have a sense of taste, he pretended to grow disgusted and spat it back out. <laughs> Ew! Hey, that wasn't a cookie! The kids around him immediately burst into giggles. Even though they had seen the same joke countless times, they still didn't seem to get enough of it. Ah, you gotta stop doing this, Ezekiel! You're gonna make me sick, and then who's gonna run this place? That was the last reasonably normal moment he got before it was Moon's turn to take over. As the kids began to clean up and throw their trash away, the hour came. One o'clock. Nap time. Nap time was his only break in the chaos of the daycare, but Sun had been dreading this moment all day. He still had some time, though. Just a little longer. A girl, Jackie, tugged on his sleeve, her big eyes scrunched up in worry. Mr. Sun, does it have to be nap time now? Well, yes, Sun nodded. We can't go without- But Moon is scary, Harriet butted in, several more nodding in agreement. Even though the kids hadn't been there for that, he was certain that their parents watched the news and had to explain to the children why they couldn't go back to the daycare for a long while. Clearly, some had been less forgiving while expressing what Moon had done. Moon, Moon isn't scary anymore, Sun explained slowly, acutely aware of his brother listening in. He, he jumped on Sophie because he was really sick, and, and he thought that she was a bad guy. Did she die? Matthew asked. That question startled him quite a bit. What? She didn't come here today, Matthew pointed out. Uh, oh! <laughs> Sun gave a nervous laugh. No, 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 she she didn't die. She she probably just d doesn't want to come back here. Moon frightened her quite a bit that night. Well, what happened then? F Freddy got to Moon before he could do anything, Sun explained, greatly simplifying the horrifying struggle between the two. He made him let her go. Sophie is completely fine. She just got a few cuts and scrapes. Moon got... grounded and learned his lesson. He's not like that anymore. Even that explanation didn't seem to take away their worry. And honestly, it was hard to properly reassure them when he himself was just as anxious. What if Moon tries to get us too? Matthew asked, taking a few skittish steps back. He won't, Sun insisted. He he's not sick anymore. He's been feeling a lot better lately. O okay. He wasn't so sure if that worked, so to break the tension, Sun announced a bathroom break. He waited outside as each kid went in and out of the stalls, the line growing shorter at a nerve-wrackingly rapid pace. 
he could still remember what Moon had said to him seconds before the incident that closed the daycare in the first place. It was after hours. It had been just him and Sophie. Her parents were late. Son was tired. Here, you should get some rest, Sonny. Let me take over. I'll put her to bed and wait for her parents to arrive, Moon had said. The idea of Moon lying to him wasn't something that even crossed his mind. Sun just believed his brother at face value and closed his eyes, only to wake to the sound of a child screaming in terror. Sun, Moon spoke up in the present. I'm not chipped anymore. I, I get why you don't trust me, but I, I promise I'll do my best. Instead of resentment, Moon's presence was rattling with anxiety, like the lid of a pot full of boiling water. But he had sounded just as innocent and trustworthy when he... Please, just, just give me another chance with the kids, Moon said. I, I want to go back to normal. Sun wanted that as much as his brother did. And it's not like he could stay awake forever. That hadn't worked the first time. Sun lied down on the ground so he wouldn't fall and hurt himself during the transformation. He inhaled and exhaled, trying to relax so the process wouldn't hurt as bad. Don't scare them, he told Moon. Please, they're just children. With that, Sun let go and remotely turned the lights off. Okay, so before everyone leaves, remember, this is part one of chapter 30. So I don't want any confusion where, like, w w once I'm done with chapter 30's second part, everyone sees the thumbnail and it's like, oh, no, it's just chapter 30 and then skip over it, you know? So remember, this is part one of chapter 30. We will get part two once I'm done with it. So uh, anyway, besides that, I am so sorry for being gone for so long. So um, if, no, if, you, if you haven't been keeping up with the things I post in between chapters, so I had a huge mind cr migraine crisis in my life where a migraine suddenly set in and would not go away for weeks and weeks and weeks, no matter how many me extra medicines and steroids the neurologist would give me. And it was pretty much like incurable, it seemed, and we kept on, go it was absolutely insane because we had to keep on switching out medications because we think that amitriptyline stopped working. And we went through an entire, I basically just went through an entire character arc and after some deliberation decided not to unalive <laughs> sorry that's a little bit dark but i decided to continue living and we kept on trying new medicine and eventually we got and we got one that finally seems to be working so i'm starting to slowly recover after like six months of being out so i am so sorry about that <laughs> I was having a very rough time. I had to go to the emergency room twice. I was throwing up. It was bad. So <laughs> I'm really sorry about there being a sudden gap in this t this channel's lifespan, I guess. I just had to go and take care of that before starting up on the rewrite again. But I'm back in the saddle again. It's going really slowly, but still, I'm going to be able to do it. So, um, Anyway, uh, what to expect, uh, chapter 30's part two, part two of chapter 30 is probably going to take the same amount of time that part one took, which was like a few weeks, like maybe four weeks, like maybe a month. It could go slow, it could, it could go faster, I don't know, it just depends, but I am going to be working on that next, oh wait, no, hang on, is it? Yeah, 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 it is, okay. Chapter 30's part two, I almost confused it with Gregory stuff, anyway. Yeah, okay, I think that's all I had to say, really, so, um... Sorry for being gone. Remember, this is only part one, so don't just ignore the next thumbnail that looks a lot like this one. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll have a gap in the story. It won't make any sense. Okay, so uh, thank you for being so patient. I know that it's really frustrating to be waiting on me this long. But uh, yeah, I made it through. I survived. I'm still alive. So yeah. Bye. <laughs> thank you for watching.